What's happening? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Buy for all the good and bad inside the world of Apple. Now, last week we showed off the mountain lion, but this week we wanted to give you an inside look at some of the hidden features that you haven't seen yet. So let's jump into them. First off, cosmetically, there have been a few UI and system tweaks. The dashboard app that allows you to add a variety of widgets has changed, so you won't have to scroll through a bar at the bottom anymore, but instead, you'll be able to choose them from a launch pad-like view. You can stack widgets on top of each other like an iOS folder if you want, and even widgets like stocks have a new way to flip through information, and we might see more like this in the future. Now, in the system preferences, you'll also have a new lineup of screensaver animations like photo mobile. Look at how that flies in, or the weathered, aged look of the scrapbook theme, or vintage prints. Now, clearly, they're adding a higher production value to Mountain Lion. You'll also have a notifications preference to manage them just like you do in iOS. So you can set how many are displayed, which apps notifications you want to view, but apps like Mail also take advantage of it now. So let's show you the Mail app, and one of the new features is VIPs. It lets you mark the real important people that you interact with, and you can make someone a VIP by clicking on the star icon to the left of their name in an email. Now, once they're a VIP, you can select to read only emails from them, but even better, if you go into the preferences of mail and then into the rules section, you can create a rule that sends you a notification every time that specific VIP sends you an email and you'll never miss it. Now, Safari combines the address and the search bar together while also making the reader button a permanent fixture that strips away all the ads and distractions when you're reading a story, much like in iOS. Also, Apple talked about share sheets, but the slick addition is share sheets to the quick look mode. Now, I know plenty of people who aren't even familiar with quick look where you press the space bar on a file to instantly preview it. But now you'll be able to share files directly in the quick look mode, so that's pretty slick. So there's a look at some of the additional features and tweaks in Mountain Lion you haven't seen before it's released later this summer. And I could tell you guys right now, I'll be waiting first in Lion for it. <laughs> you get it? Lion and Lion. That's not funny, Uncle Brian. Oh, really? Well, I guess that means no more Uncle Brian pillow jumps for you. Aww. All right, back to the actual show because that's why you're all watching. In iPad 3 news, Mac rumors acquired what they believe to be the rumored iPad 3 Retina display that's been circulating on the internet. And this week, they have confirmed with iFixit, with the help of microscopes, that the next gen iPad will have a resolution of 2048 by 1356 and four times the pixels compared to the iPad 2. Keep drooling, Apple biters. The unofficial March 7th date is just around the corner. Now, we also love taking a peek at Apple patents, and there are some good ones that recently surfaced on Patently Apple. One of them is a feature to create DJ style beat match crossfading between two audio streams for Macs and iOS devices. So, creating a seamless transition to some of your songs you might have in a Genius playlist. And another discovered by Apple Insider shows Apple's ambitions to reinvent the keyboard with a thinner and lighter design with a single support lever keyboard design with a travel range of 0.2 millimeters. That's how far it goes when you press it down. Now, the goal of this new design would be to create a slimmer keyboard that eliminates that rattle noise and slimmer products and accessories in the future. All right, let's check out our app of the week. This week's app is OnLive Desktop Plus for the iPad. Now, it's made from the creators of the OnLive video game streaming service, but this time they've created a way, a real clever way, to access Windows 7 in a touchscreen environment directly on your iPad with touch support. So why should you guys care? Now, in addition to having access to the entire Office suite, you'll also have the ability to watch Flash content through the Internet Explorer browser that streamed to your iPad over a one gigabit connection. Now, the lag between your finger touches and the responsiveness of the app is really minimal. It's pretty amazing, and it's one of the first examples we've seen of a cloud computing solution that works really well. You'll also have two gigs of storage space that you can access through the cloud. It's $5 a month, and it will be coming soon to Android, Macs, monitors, and TVs, and it's left me very impressed, so you guys should check it out. Now, back to the stories. Earlier this week, Apple gave ABC's Nightline behind-the-scenes access to their Foxconn production line during a Fair Labor Association review that was paid for by Apple after the overwhelming reports about the poor working conditions on site. Now, it's worth mentioning that ABC's parent company is Disney, and Steve Jobs was Disney's largest shareholder, so no conflict of interest there. But overall, the report revealed nothing new, but it did show that it takes 141 steps to make an iPhone, and it takes an iPad five days to build and passes through 325 hands during production. 
Workers are paid $1.78 an hour. They pay roughly 70 cents per meal and pay $17.50 a month to share a company dorm with five to seven other people. Now, the next day after the segment aired, reports from factory workers claimed that underage workers were transferred to other departments or were not scheduled to work overtime during the inspection. Talk about a bad apple. Now, it's really a story that won't go away no matter how much Apple wants it to, and we'll keep you posted if anything new happens. All right, let's wrap things up on a happy note. You know we're good friends of Jealous Skins here on our show. It's the skin you always see on my eye goodies. Now, they launched their new hard case line that recently brings the same awesome designs on a real protective case. And to celebrate, they are hooking up five of my favorite Apple biters with a $40 gift card. So how do you win this thing? Well, did you guys know that a cougar is a mountain lion? Okay, okay, I know you guys do, and I love cougars, but there are other wildcats in addition to the cougar that are mountain lions. So name me at least two. If you're correct, we'll pick your name randomly and announce the winners next week, just like that. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. Email us at theapplebite.cnet.com. Thanks for watching. I'm Brian Tong, and we'll catch you guys next week for another bite of the apple.